to our Monday Night Raw review. And we start, of course, with the authority. Specifically, Triple H comes out. You know what, though? I think this was a little bit more tolerable than usual. Honestly, the person that got on my nerves most in this segment was Seth Rollins, which is a good thing because he's the top heel in the company right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Seth is really coming off in this whole thing as a petulant child, and it's funny I say that because Triple H likened the behavior of Seth Rollins and Kane to his own children. He says, you know, we're going to air this out once and for all. I'm not going to have everything go to smoke because of unchecked egos. You know, he does call out egos. Seth Rollins. Triple H seriously call people out for having egos. Yeah, I'm sure we all found that hilarious. Um, he does call out Seth Rollins and J&J Security. Uh, Rollins, you know, does try sucking up and saying, you know, it's great that we're on the same page. This crowd was hot for Dean Ambrose, though, because, you know, this is Dean Ambrose's hometown. Yeah, he's from Cincinnati, and they were freaking out for him. Oh, they were. I I loved seeing a crowd this hot for Ambrose. It's weird, because it's almost like they recaptured that Chicago punk thing. Yeah, they And the Seattle Bryan thing, except it's a a town that they go to a lot. They go to Cincinnati a lot more than they go to Seattle. Right, yeah, definitely, definitely. Honestly, when I was hearing that crowd, I'm like, WWE, that should have been the norm for Dean Ambrose if you handled his babyface push right, which there, you know, recovery's happening, certainly, but I'm like, man, I want to hear that for Ambrose every week. But I think for, by this time next year you will be. I, I, I tend to agree. I really hope. Uh, but I'll tell you one person who didn't want to hear it, Seth Rollins. Uh, who uh, he really sold it well, you know, with his emoting and stuff. His face definitely looked agitated. And then, you know, he says it's because of a seven-foot-tall cancer trying to poison the authority from the inside that all this is happening to me. And then he does talk about the uh, the fatal four-way, you know, talking about, you know, Orton Reigns. And, yes, Dean Ambrose and the crowd pop that Rollins finally acknowledged the elephant in the room. And then he says, you know, that this cane is not the cane you ran with. Something needs to be done about this. He needs to be taken out of the authority. He's broken and he can't be fixed. He needs to be replaced or he just needs to be dealt with. Um, And then, of course, Kane comes out and, you know, he says, you know, the only thing I really feel like doing is choke slamming you, grabbing you by your turkey neck and choke slamming you to hell. So, again, it implodes. Triple H says, you know, enough, enough. I'm tired of this. Tells both the guys pretty much get your crap together. Looks at Kane and says, hey. You know, I understand your feelings towards Seth Rollins. I understand sometimes you want to punch him in the face, but you don't because I tell you to because he's best for business. Now, if you can't get over it, I don't see you having a place, you know, in the authority, and you need to think about that. And, of course, Kane is silent. He doesn't say anything. And he says, you know, I I can tell by your silence you don't want to leave, so we're going to settle this tonight because all four members of the Fatal 4-Way are going to be in action. Kane, you're going to be going against Roman Reigns, and you're going to show us that you're serious about this and you're going to handle it. Seth Rollins is going to go against Randy Orton. Why the authority is still doing things to their champions, I don't understand. Uh, and, and it's so funny, too, right? Because the whole thing with Rollins and Kane was, if the authority was here, the stuff you're doing to me wouldn't happen to me. And the first week that Triple H is back, he throws Seth Rollins in the ring against Randy Orton. Am I the only one that sees kind of a problem with that? I don't know. Um, yeah, I know what you're saying. But uh, but but it gets better though. It gets better because the secret weapon of the authority, uh, you know, Jamie Noble gets in the face of Triple H. Says, "Hey, you know, with all due respect, Seth Rollins is the man around here. I can't replicate his accent, but he's you dead. are actually doing really good. Keep going. I <laughs> know I've lost it, man. I've lost it. But tells uh, tells Triple H, look, Seth is the man around here." You need to show him some respect. And it, I love Jamie Noble, man. I really do. I think I've fallen in love with him all over again since he's done this whole authority thing. Um, and then, of course, Triple H has to make fun of their height. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, were you saying something? And then, more or less, after a few more jabs at, at Noble Mercury, he says, you're going to be in a two-on-one handicap match because, hey, get it? You guys together make one person <laughs> against Dean Ambrose. And the crowd, of course, loses their shit. Uh, the authority goes to the back. j and security are looking like, oh, man, we've done it now. And Dean comes out, just breezes by everybody in the authority, like, yeah, that title's going to be mine. <laughs> and, you know, he has this handicap match. And, uh, yeah, our first matchup, uh, J&J Security versus Dean Ambrose, two-on-one handicap match. Um, 
Honestly, this is a fun opener. I, I mean, Dean, I, I think, was working off the perfect people. Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble are a great comedy foil, you know, to really sell the offense and, and be those great cowardly heels. Uh, when Ambrose is in control, the crowd was hot for all of it. Uh, Ambrose did a double lariat at one point, sending both of them over the announce table, and then Dean Ambrose kind of sits Indian style on the table. I actually was fearful of CM Punk champ might break out when he did that, because yeah. my mind immediately went to Punk, but this crowd is actually reserved about it. And um, long story short, uh, Dean Ambrose pins Jamie Noble after Dirty Deeds, and he gets the win. So Ambrose is really building that momentum heading towards payback, and it's beautiful to see. Absolutely. Uh, anything you want to say about this match, or can we move on to the next segment? I just I just appreciate that the WWE kind of gave this crowd what they wanted to start the night out. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? And and how they ended the night, which we'll get to later, I, I felt like they did it perfectly. Perfect punctuation of the show, if anything else. Um, with that said, we go right into our next matchup, Dolph Ziggler versus King Barrett. Sheamus is out for commentary. Uh, you know, Barrett makes reference to Neville, because he cuts a promo, you know, pre-match promo, says that Neville's a peasant, he's going to, you know, learn respect, and that he'll never, uh, gravity will never forget him once he gets hit with a bull hammer. So we actually learn, in the context of this matchup, two matches that are going to take place to payback. We find out that Dolph Ziggler is going to have a rematch with Sheamus, one-on-one, just a regular straight-up match, and King Barrett is going to go one-on-one with Neville. So I really like that we bang out two matches here in the, in the context of this one segment. So really good stuff. Um, not really much to say about this match. I enjoy the chemistry of, of Ziggler and Barrett. They had a nice back and forth here. I actually like how they started this matchup because uh, Barrett's like, ring the bloody bell, referee. And as he's putting his garment away and everything, Ziggler catches him with a super kick. That was pretty cool. Uh, at the end of the matchup, though, does come after a nice back and forth. Barrett is eating steel post, and it seems like Ziggler's going to hit the zigzag, but Sheamus gets the distraction on the apron, and then when Ziggler turns his attention back to Barrett, he eats a bull hammer. Barrett gets the win. Smart booking here. I would actually like to see Barrett start racking up some victories. I don't really know if he's even going to be a contender for Money in the Bank this year. I know it's been kind of a hot debate, but even if he's not... Let's give him some shine. I mean, hell, I'd actually like to see him in a chamber match this year since the Elimination Chamber match is coming back. Yeah. You know, let's get him in there and let's get him some shine there. Like, it's about time. If you're going to do the King of the Ring tournament, why don't you make me give a damn in the aftermath? And I like Barrett, so I think he's the perfect guy to start. So, great job getting the win there. After the match, you know, Barrett leaves, you know, in, in his kingly attire, and Sheamus comes in and he pummels Ziggler. I'm going to be honest, Ash, and I expected Neville to make the run in here and make the save. A little surprised that didn't happen. Uh, but of you know course, what? We should have known when he didn't that he would be the one answering Cena's open challenge. Yeah, you're so right. Yeah, I, I didn't telegraph that at all. I, I uh, appreciate the WWE for kind of giving us almost like a little hint there. Like maybe we need, maybe we need to pay attention in future shows to kind of see who we expect to show up that doesn't, and then maybe that'll that person will be answering the challenge. Exactly. Uh, you know, Sheamus puts the boots to Ziggler, you know, quite literally. He does punctuate it with a bro kick, and he stands over him. Are you not entertained? Great stuff from Sheamus. I love Sheamus' new catchphrase. It's so good. I just want him to get on a roll, dude, because I think if he had some momentum behind him, which I think will start at payback, I could... You mean momentum in the form of a winning streak. Yeah, like a, like a winning streak, just, you know, getting that dominance. I, I love that he's in a program here. Now that the Intercontinental Championship pitcher is open, which we'll talk about that, you know, more later. That's uh, Sheamus' you know. belt to win as far as I'm concerned. Oh, definitely. Let's get it on him. I, For me, I'm it excited. comes down to Sheamus or Neville. Definitely. Completely agree with you on all counts, everything you just said. Uh, so I'm not even going to touch I think, that. Let's honestly, I don't even think Neville is that great of an option. I think they want to kind of give it to a that that like fringe main event guy where like he could work programs in the main event but isn't necessarily a full-time main eventer and i think sheamus fits that bill perfectly maybe even i don't know maybe even bad news barrett since he's like the king and maybe they'll just kind of put him on a hot streak i don't know if ambrose wasn't doing what he's doing right now i'd i'd automatically say oh, yeah. I, I want ambrose exactly yeah. i want him to win money in the bank Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the summer of Ambrose, baby. You ain't stopping it. Nobody's stopping it. Um, so I completely agree. With you. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. I love everything you said, so I'm not even going to touch it. So we're going to move on to our next segment, Eric Rowan versus Fondango. Yeah, this was the weird thing. You know what, Ashton? Maybe it's me being a bit much, so forgive me. But if I had to force a nitpick about anything, 
I didn't like the commentary was making bets about like how long this match is going to last because as somebody noted on Pleetoff, which was an excellent point, it felt too much like Baron Corbin. And That's I was kind the of hoping- thing, though, John. People that watch the main roster aren't necessarily familiar with Baron Corbin. I love this because it's almost a way to sort of reintroduce the Baron Corbin gimmick to the main roster without the admittedly green actual Baron Corbin needing to be on the main roster. That is a solid point. I'll, I'll give you that. And, and hell, if they're going to give it to anybody, you might as well give it to two guys. Well, I mean, and, specifically here, Rowan. Well, not even necessarily two guys, but if anyone needs something like this, it's Eric freaking Rowan after his fall in winter. Oh, my God. He had a horrible... I thought Sheamus' babyface turn was bad. I mean, hell, at least he took it all the way to the World Heavyweight title. Rowan didn't do anything. Anytime a ginger goes to the WWE, they need to remind themselves never to let them turn heel because that just does not work. Yeah, they're they're soulless. They're always meant to be bad guys. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily know why you said that, but I think Vince might agree with you. <laughs> I'm just making a South Park reference there. I love all genders. No worries. But, uh, yeah, Eric Rowan, he just decimates Fandango here. It's all good. I, I love Harper and Rowan as a team. Uh, you know I was one of the people frustrated. I think you shared that frustration with me when they could not put away the Usos in their program to win the tag team titles. I felt like during that run, they should have been tag team champions. If they win it now, honestly, I'm loving the division with New Day, Cesaro, and Kid. Hell, maybe I'll even be able to get behind Axel and, and you know Macho Mandau if that does become more of a thing after the program they're doing, which we'll get into later. So it's becoming a more diverse division. I think the reintroduction of Harper and Rowan is a nice breath of fresh air. Uh, I would love to see them again win the belts. I've got that goal back on track. We'll see if it happens, but this is a squash match here. Eric Rowan wins with the uh, the full Nelson slam. Uh, so, you know, he's keeping his finisher very basic. And then, uh, you know, Fandango ate a lariat from Harper afterwards, and Harper's still just so good. I'm actually even happier for him because he's so good, and now he's going to be back with something to do. So good stuff. And if I recall, it was a 37 or 38 second match. 37 second match, uh, Ashton. So yeah, they, yeah, he decimated him. There you go, people. Now you know. Um, and I'm surprised we're getting to this already. I should say pleasantly surprised, however. 